Greetings, true believers, and welcome to another Invincible episode of History of the Marvel Universe. This week's tale begins several thousand years ago on the planet Kakara Nathara, the fourth world of the Maklu system. Maklu 4 was a world of peace and prosperity, inhabited by humanoid dragons. However, some of its people grew bored of their peaceful existence and set out in search of new worlds to conquer. But during their travel, something went wrong and their ship was damaged by an unexpected burst of cosmic radiation. Crash landing on Earth, the alien vessel came to rest within a mountain cave in ancient China. Before exiting their ship, the aliens left behind the Ten Rings of Power which were used to operate the vessel. The Kakara Natharans emerged to inspect the planet they had now found themselves on, only to be attacked by the strange mammalian creatures that inhabited the Earth. Young and inexperienced, several of the dragons were slain while one of them, Axon Kar, was grievously injured and retreated back into the cave. Ten of them survived and the area where they were encountered would become known as the Valley of Dragons. The Kakara Natharans naturally had a level of control over their own shape and size, and so over time they were able to adapt to a human-like appearance. But one of their number was ordered to stay behind while the others infiltrated human society. The one chosen to remain was the ship's navigator, and he assumed a form much larger than his brothers. Fittingly, his true name, while too complex for human tongues, translates to he whose limbs shatter mountains and whose back scrapes the sun. However, on Earth, he would be known by a crude approximation of the original Macluan, Fin Fang Foom. Using a rare herb indigenous to the area, the alien captain placed Foom into a deep sleep. However, men eventually stumbled on the sleeping dragon and discovered a method of reviving him. He emerged several times over the centuries, reportedly having encounters with Ulysses Bloodstone and Thor under unrevealed circumstances. But he was eventually returned to his slumber and the name Fin Fang Foom, as well as the herbs that could pacify or awaken him, were passed down in forbidden writings. Furthermore, the door to the cave was barricaded and men began guarding the entrance against intruders. However, in 1961, a Taiwanese student named Chan Lu Chao discovered manuscripts detailing the legend of Fin Fang Fu. During this time of political tension, his brother had enlisted to defend their homeland against communist forces, but Chan decided on a different tactic. Traveling to the Valley of the Sleeping Dragon, he was able to slip past the guards who dared not enter the ancient cave. Then, with the herbs described in the manuscript, Chan Lu Chao awakened the massive form of Fin Fang Foom. Mocking the beast, the young man ran from the cave, causing the dragon to give chase. Leading Foom to nearby military installations, Lu Chao was effectively able to use him as a weapon against the communist regime. After that, he led the beast to its cave once more and used the other herb to return Fin Fang Foom to his slumber. There he remained until the Marvel Age of Heroes, during which time Foom reportedly awakened and battled both the Fantastic Four and the Incredible Hulk. After the Hulk threw the dragon into space, he landed on the moon and was subsequently abducted by the Elder of the Universe known as the Collector. The Collector held Foom captive with other such creatures in a facility beneath Canada, but Foom made his escape when that location was attacked by the subterranean supervillain, the Mole Man. Fin Fang Foom subsequently made his way back to the Valley of Dragons to resume his slumber. However, his location was later discovered by the mad scientist, Dr. Aloysius Vault. Vault attempted to use his machines to take control of Fin Fang Foom and send the monster to battle his arch nemesis, the giant stone statue known as It, the Living Colossus. Fortunately, Foom regained control of himself and joined forces with It to repel an invasion of alien gargoyles from the planet Stonus V. I talked about these events in more detail in my video about It, the Living Colossus. However, Vault was indeed able to seize control of Foom and turn him against it. But during the fight, the dragon became caught in a tangle of broken power lines, and the resulting shock freed him of Vault's control. 
Although Fin Fang Foom was unable to speak, possibly a lingering effect of the mind control, it isn't really explained, the beast was able to draw the face of the man who attempted to use him. Foom and it parted ways as allies, the dragon returning to his resting place yet again. Fin Fang Foom next emerged when a cult called the Beyond Reason Spiritual Fellowship decided to use him as a host for their dark god, the demon An Tanu. Foom was possessed by the demon, but the fellowship was opposed by an occult group called the Legion of Night. One member of the Legion was Dr. Chan Lu Chao, the young man who'd awoken Fin Fang Foom several decades prior. The Legion was able to prevent the Fellowship from using Fin Fang Foom's body to birth a new race of demons, and successfully cast An Tanu out of the dragon's form. Foom subsequently returned to his place of rest yet again and resumed his slumber. Meanwhile, the captain of the Kakaranatharan vessel had persisted through the centuries in human form, and had taken the name Chen Shu. It was around this time that Shu allied himself with a Chinese supervillain called the Mandarin. In fact, years prior, it was the Mandarin who discovered the crashed McLuhan starship and claimed for himself the Ten Rings of Power contained within. Chen Shu revealed the herb necessary to rouse Fin Fang Foom yet again, and the Mandarin made his way into the dragon's cave, the guards outside making no effort to impede his progress. Thus, the Mandarin awakened the mighty beast, seeking to use his power. Furthermore, since his last emergence, Fin Fang Foom had grown to an even more gargantuan size. His height had always been inconsistent, likely due to his alien physiology allowing him to alter his shape, but he normally stood at roughly 32 feet. Some sources claim that this height is fairly standard for a fully grown McLuhan, and that the dragons who originally came to Earth were smaller because of their relative youth. But after growing in his sleep, Fin Fang Foom had reached a gargantuan height of 255 feet, measuring a length of 350 feet from his head to the tip of his tail. Tired of the affairs of mankind, the now enormous dragon broke free from his cave, shattering the mountain that contained him. At this point, he truly lived up to the meaning of his name, he whose limbs shatter mountains and whose back scrapes the sun. The savage monster raged as the Mandarin and Chen Shu watched from a safe distance. In fact, it was Chen Shu who pacified the dragon, putting him to sleep until his power was needed once more. Meanwhile, the Mandarin never suspected the old man's true intentions. With the threat of Fin Fang Foom literally looming over them, the Chinese government surrendered huge swaths of land to the Mandarin, giving him control over one-third of the country. Seeking to strike back, China's military turned to the Mandarin's old nemesis, Iron Man, for help. Since the original Iron Man, Tony Stark, was temporarily out of commission, Jim Rhodes, the second Iron Man, launched an assault on the Mandarin's castle, only for Chen Shu to awaken and unleash Fin Fang Foom. Rhodey fought valiantly, even burying the dragon under an entire mountain of rubble, but defeating a monster of that size single-handedly would be a Herculean effort for any one hero. Fortunately, Stark was able to provide backup by sending a second Iron Man suit and piloting it remotely. However, it was then that Chen Shu revealed his own hand, having telepathically summoned the other McLuhans. Reverting back to their true forms, the other alien dragons had also grown much larger over the centuries. Even Chen Shu revealed his true mammoth self. Thus began a great battle between two armored Avengers and a legion of alien dragons. Even the Mandarin joined the fight. Realizing that he had been betrayed and the dragon sought to conquer Earth, he stood alongside the Iron Men to defend it. And in order to defeat the dragons, the two bitter enemies were forced to combine their powers. Iron Man was able to supercharge the Mandarin's rings with his own power source, unleashing a blast large and powerful enough to completely wipe out the dragons. The Mandarin also lost his hands in the blast, but of course this would not be the end for him. Neither was it the end for Fin Fang Foom. 
While the other McLuhans were killed and Foom's colossal body was destroyed, he was able to transfer his spirit into a small dragon statue. A statue that eventually made its way to an Asian curio shop in America where it caught the eye of a man named Billy Yuan. Billy was a guitarist who played in a band, and he loved his sister Annie more than anything. However, Billy's bandmates proved to be a bad influence on his sister. Annie developed a drug addiction and suffered from a heroin overdose. She was hospitalized, and Billy dropped everything, even selling his guitar to help pay for her medical bills. And so when the dragon statue seemed to call to him, speaking into his mind and promising help, Billy took the statue and ran. Snapping back to reality, he began to question himself, but rationalized that he could sell the statue to cover some of his sister's medical expenses. However, Fin Fang Foom had other plans. The dragon forced his way into Billy's mind and body, transferring his spirit to the human's form and mutating him into a hulking reptilian monster. The transformed Billy went on a rampage in Seattle, smashing ATMs and grabbing money until Iron Man arrived on the scene and intercepted him. While the Armored Avenger was able to knock Billy out, scores of lizards emerged from the sewers and swarmed over the unconscious body. Coalescing into one, Fin Fang Foom took full control over their combined form, using the excess mass to recreate his original body. Thus began the rematch between Iron Man and the massive alien dragon. At the same time, Billy's mind still existed within Fin Fang Foom's body. At first, he intended not to fight back, since Foom could not destroy Billy's spirit, unless he struggled for control. But when the dragon threatened Annie, Billy sacrificed himself, holding Foom at bay long enough for Iron Man to knock him out. After that, the dragon was transferred to the giant animal preserve on the aptly named Monster Island. And that's basically the origin story of Fin Fang Foom, so let's quickly look at some of his other appearances since then. For example, he was defeated by Wonder Woman when the Justice League traveled to the Marvel Universe and landed on Monster Island. After that, Thor claimed to have slain Fin Fang Foom and used his bones to craft the door of Atri's tomb, but there are conflicting reports as to when this actually happened. Files collected by Elsa Bloodstone claim that Thor killed Foom after his encounter with the Justice League. However, the official handbook of the Marvel Universe states that Thor slew the dragon in ancient times and claimed his bones then, only for Foom to later reform in a new body. This explanation is backed up by the fact that Foom himself has implied that he was defeated by Thor centuries before. However, it should also be noted that this encounter has only been hinted at in dialogue and never fully documented. We have witnessed one battle between Thor and Fin Fang Foom prior to this, but in that instance it was revealed to be the world serpent Jormungand in disguise and not the real Fin Fang Foom. In either event, Foom apparently later became a follower of Buddhism, petitioned to be released from Monster Island through legal action, was shrunk down to human size, and became a cook working in the Fantastic Four's headquarters, the Baxter Building. He was cloned by the Beyond Corporation, but that clone was killed by the Machine Man and the Next Wave Squad. He begrudgingly saved Christmas alongside Doctor Strange's assistant, Wong, and he later returned to a more monstrous size, but was evidently defeated by the unbeatable Squirrel Girl. After that, he was returned to his sanctuary on Monster Island. Subsequently, he was manipulated by the psychic mutant Mentalo on behalf of the corrupt Roxxon Oil Corporation and battled the X-Men. He was also one of several monsters to fight the Incredible Hulk after being summoned by the subterranean supervillain Tyrannus. He got punched in the face by Dupe, apparently. Okay. He had another encounter with the Fantastic Four in which the heroic foursome halted one of his rampages. He fought with Amadeus Cho, the self-titled Totally Awesome Hulk, while Cho was attempting to impress the alien monster queen, Lady Hellbender. He retreated into space and founded an underground death cult battle arena, intending to baptize the last eggs of his species in the blood of fallen warriors. This put him into conflict with Drax the Destroyer and a former Herald of Galactus, Terax, when they found themselves in his arena. However, this turned 
turned out to all be for naught when most of the eggs were unviable and crumbled to dust. Although one did survive and hatched into a baby ice dragon. For a brief time, he took up the life of a farmer alongside Terax, even obtaining a hat large enough to fit him at his normal 32-foot state. And at some point, he returned to Earth and attacked a shield helicarrier when they discovered and spilled a case of monster-attracting pheromone. That time, Iron Man and Captain Marvel arrived on the scene to keep the monster at bay. However, ultimately, it was Laura Kinney, the all-new Wolverine, who saved the day by soaking her costume in the pheromone and leading the dragon out to sea. He later distributed little pants to the masses for pants giving. Okay, that one may or may not be canon. But what is definitely canon is Fin Fang Foom's involvement in the events of Monsters Unleashed. Across the globe, giant alien creatures known as Leviathans were raining down. However, a young boy named Kei Kawade, otherwise known as Kid Kaiju, had the inhuman ability to summon monsters to his side simply by drawing them in his notebook. And so Kay used this power to call forth Fin Fang Foom and several other monsters living on Earth to combat the Leviathans. For the first time since the war against the Stonusian Gargoyles, Fin Fang Foom stood alongside others to combat a hostile alien threat. So at the end of the day, Fin Fang Foom isn't a hero, but it's also difficult to classify him as a traditional villain. He's a monster, but he's not mindless. He's ancient and intelligent, but is also susceptible to manipulation and mind control. He will defend the Earth if it benefits him, but will turn against mankind if it better suits his purposes. He has already appeared in several stories beyond the ones we've talked about today, so it's safe to assume we'll continue to see the giant alien dragon make appearances in the future of the Marvel Universe. But that is the history of Fin Fang Foom. And thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, share the video, and subscribe for more Marvelous content. Be sure to leave a comment letting me know what Marvel hero or villain you want to hear about next. And as always, the issues referenced in this video are listed in the description below if you would like to read them for yourself as well as links to other places you can find me, including my Patreon page, where for only a dollar a month you can get your name in these special thanks here. So until next time, true believers, Excelsior!